Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Starbet, Suave, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. We're most honored tonight to have as our guest panelist a gentleman who is the brilliant author of South Pacific and the new book, sure to be a bestseller, The Bridget Andow, Mr. James Michener. It is my great privilege to introduce the charming, the witty, the lovely Arlene Francis. Mr. Mishner. And at my left will be the distinguished publisher of the distinguished author on my right, Mr. Bennett Cerf. And it's my pleasure to introduce our beetle browed, eagle eyed panel moderator, <laughs> none other than John Charles Daly. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. And panel, welcome to the happy thought that you get your blindfolds out and get ready to put same on. Because tonight, we're once again departing from some of the more usual practices of What's My Line. And the panel will have more fun, we hope, as a result. We hope they get stuck, too. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Now we shall have a chance to meet our first contestant panel. Are those blindfolds all in place? Are we? Yes. All right. Will our first challenger come in and sign in, please? All right. I would just ask you, familiar with the way we keep score? Yes. All right, if you know how we keep score, let's let everybody at home and those who are here with us, except the panel, know exactly what your line is. <laughs> Needless to say, panel, there is something about uh, our first challenger that uh, has a wide area of identification. It could be in costuming, handwriting, name, almost anything, so you've been blindfolded. But we'll give you one bit of help. Our guest is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Would anyone on this panel recognize you by your face without your costume? Yes. Uh, have you been uh, in the home of anyone on this panel? Have you been what, Dorothy? In the home. Have you ever visited the home of anyone on this panel? Not that I know of. One down and nine to go, Mr. Michener. Uh, do you uh, receive uh, your income from the general public? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, in the form of admissions? <laughs> no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Is your face not only familiar to somebody on this panel, but perhaps familiar to the audience? Could be. It, yes, it would be a fair assumption that certainly a percentage of the audience would find Would you be considered a performer? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. He hopes not, did he say? Yeah, I, hope I guess that he hopes not. Uh, not so bad. Would it be fair to assume that you do not work for a profit-making organization? <laughs> yes, that would be fair. Well, I, I didn't that would be fair. To assume that. Would it possibly be some kind of a government office that you hold? Yes. Uh, is it the federal government? Yes. Are you at present stationed for one purpose or another in Washington, D.C.? Yes. Uh, 
Do you hold an office to which you were elected? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. You then hold an appointive office? Yes. Are you with the judiciary? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Mechner. Uh, do you have anything to do with the handling of money? No. <laughs> Yes, I can attest to that. He doesn't. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Do you hold an office that would keep you in close contact with the President of the United States? Yes. Uh, would you be considered a liaison between the President and the rest of the people? Yes. Uh, uh, all right, He could you? be one of two people, couldn't he? Could you be either? Uh, the new office of secretary uh, between the president and the cabinet, uh, Mr. Rabb, or could you be, uh, or could you be the president's doctor, or could you be Mr. Haggerty? <laughs> could you be one of those three? Yes. <laughs> oh, swell. <laughs> uh, You're doing great, Miss Harley. Uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Try St. Haggerty. Patrick's? <laughs> Try Haggerty. Yes. Does, uh, does March the 17th mean more to you than it would to the other gentlemen? I'm sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you Mr. James Haggerty? Yes, he yes, is. <laughs> <laughs> Jim just said, I, don't, I didn't think I'd get that far. He didn't. I saw him a bit before that. Six down and four to go. Very few people do that. All well. right. Very, very well, Jim. That's great. Actually, I will, at the risk of, of uh, embarrassing Jim a bit, say that he is the president's press secretary now. But he has been, and I dare say will again someday, be a, a very fine reporter. And I would think perhaps his success has come from the fact that he's always treated the press in Washington as he would like to have been treated where he's still a great reporter, which he was and will be again. My, thank you for those words. I'll come up again. Oh, fine, Jim. Thanks very Thanks, much Jim. for coming to see us. It was good to have you as a guest, and we nearly got him, Jim. <laughs> Will you say good night to come? Panel, let's see what you can do with our second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Joyce Vidbell, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Vidbell, and where are you from? Wyndham, New York. Wyndham, New York. Fine. Mrs. Vidbell, the panel. Now, will you come over here, please, and sit down. Do you know how we keep score? Wait just a sec. The, uh, see, we can help things along a little bit. There we are. Do you know how we keep score? Yes. You do? Every time you can give a no answer, I'll flip a card. Ten no's, and you've won the game. All set? All right. All right, then let's let everybody at home, those here with us, know exactly what your line is. Mrs. Bidbell is salaried, and uh, let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Ms. Bidbell, I'd like to ask you a, a question, if I may. I never heard of Wyndham, New York. What's the nearest big city to Wyndham? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hudson or Kingston, I think, would be. Oh, is it somewhere along the Hudson yeah. Valley? Albany, about 30 miles south of Albany. Do you do your work in, in Wyndham? Or near Wyndham? No. That's one down and nine to go. That makes it Miss Kilgallen. <clears throat> uh, is the type of work that you do work that could be done in almost any city in the United States? Yes. It could be, but this would presuppose that you would have a great deal of latitude in finding a place to do it in any city in the United States. I don't get that, John. You will when we get <laughs> to the end of this, darling. I mean, uh, it's not impossible to... Mm -hmm perform the duty in any city in the United States. At the same time, there would be requirements that would uh, require latitude in searching out the place to do it. I see. Uh, do you work uh, with other people in what you do? Yes. 
But here again, I mean, are you asking specifically, are other people vital and necessary to the performance of the task? No, because just think, are they around at the well, time? Oh, there'd be some people around, yeah. <laughs> Do people ever watch you when you do what you're doing? Could they be termed an audience? Yes. Is there anything uh, difficult about what you do? I mean, is it something that everybody on this panel couldn't do? I doubt it. <laughs> I think that there is something rather difficult about what... Uh, uh -huh. Does it require some physical ability? Yes, I would say it does. Do you move about in your work? Yes. Agreed. Would you be likely to do it in uh, an arena or some sort of an enclosure to which the public would come, a rather large one? Larger than a theater? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, would you consider yourself an athlete? An athlete? Mm-hmm. No, I wouldn't think so. This is not rule out that Mrs. Vidville may have substantial athletic ability, but we don't... I, don't I was thinking of track or something like that. No, it isn't that, Dorothy. All right, Mr. Mitchell? Would a uh, group of sailors on shore leave enjoy watching you do what you do? <laughs> <laughs> Would they be permitted to watch you do what you do? Oh, yeah. Would they have to pay admission <laughs> to, uh, uh, to, uh, to see you? Uh, does anybody see you, uh, no, uh, does everybody who watches you have to pay admission? Well, uh, there's a certain amount of paper in every house. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> but we're assuming that this is a going concern, yes. It's a going concern, and we can assume that wherever possible, they will pay, uh, <clears throat> or uh, if the uh, management has to say they uh, will. Do you wear a costume when you're uh, doing what you do? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, well, let's take the times that you do wear. <laughs> I rush here to say that we specifically mean that uh, Mrs. Vidbell does not always wear a costume. She can work in other than a costume as such. I see, but if she... <laughs> well, that's exactly where I was before. Yeah. Uh, but if, uh, if she wore this costume, would I recognize it as such? In a general way, I would think you might, yes. Um, does she stand still while she's doing this? Mm. No. No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. You did awfully well there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something uh, that has locomotion that you operate with? Yeah. Is it uh, other than an animal? I asked the wrong question, didn't I? Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Then you, you do some work with animals. Said he jumping right into the breach. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Would the animals that you work with be four-legged creatures? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you sit astride one of these animals if occasion yeah. warranted? Yeah. Would the animals be horses? No. <laughs> Five to go, Miss Gilgallon. Would they be bigger than horses? Yes. yes. Are they rather prickly when you sit on them? Rather <laughs> <laughs> <Not a> prickly. <laughs> um. This, I, you might want to argue this later, Well, but I'll tell you what I mean if you'd like All right, me to what do you explain. mean? Elephants. You do? Yes. I wrote an elephant in a circus well, once. Well, Mr. Shidbell says they keep them shaved all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but if, you, if you meant elephants, Dorothy, we'll have to say yes. Well, that's what I did. I rode one once for charity in Madison Square Garden, and I tell that's you... That's why they were pricklers. <laughs> This, I really shouldn't do it, but that one you wrote forgot to get his Remington electric shaver. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, Mrs. Mrs. Vidbell is a, an elephant rider? Uh, that isn't adequate, Oh, I'm Dorothy. sorry. Dorothy, sorry, I'm going to have to flip the card on that. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, you work with elephants, let me take it. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you, uh... <laughs> Present uh, company accepted. Yes. Uh, you are an elephant trainer. Right. right. <laughs> Where do you do all this elephant work? I think probably Mr. Cerf wants to come and watch this. Well, I work with the Hammond Morton Circus, and we will be at Palisades Park on April 12th. And the shaving concession is open. Who would like to have it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Nice Dove. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just... And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, once again, I've had to ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, Back sir. on. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? our mystery challenge we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise. We'll begin it all with uh, Arlene Francis. Are you a performer in one of the arts? Yes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Uh, I presume that you are masculine despite that falsetto. Is that correct? Yes. Ms. Kilgallen? Are you in television? Yes. Mr. Mishner? Uh, are you also in the movies? Yes. Miss Francis? Do you ever say no? <laughs> <laughs> now, are you a leading man? Yes. Mr. <laughs> Sir? Uh, are you a, a star in movies? Would your name be up on the marquee if you appear in a picture? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Uh, are you a romantic type? Oh. This is what I'll answer for our guest. I would say decidedly yes, as far as the general public is concerned. I haven't consulted him as to his own subjective views I, in this matter. I got the size from the ladies in the balcony. Thank you, John. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mitchell. Have you just come to America from a foreign country? <laughs> what is your term of reference? Well, just within now? the say within the last three weeks no. from from overseas. No. That makes it one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, but could you have appeared in a foreign country since there was some hesitation there? Yes. Mr. Sir. Uh, could it be that you were actually uh, born in a foreign country and uh, spoke with an English accent when you first came over here? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett, I will have to give you a no on that. You mean I, he was not born in a foreign country? I, he didn't speak with an accent? All I can tell you is you will have to get a no to the question as you post it. But I can't take it down in its particulars. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Were you born in a foreign country and came over here speaking with a Spanish accent? No. <laughs> Three down, or seven to go, <laughs> Mr. Mitchell. No, I didn't say English. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. No, you said an English accent, Bennett. Mr. Um, Mitchner? Is uh, one of your uh, moving pictures playing in New York now? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Well, to get back to what you come over here speaking in. <laughs> <laughs> Did you speak with a French accent? Yes. Jolly good. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Serb? Well, if you spoke with a French accent, he must uh, be an Italian actor. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you ever uh, star in a picture with Olivia de Havilland? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? It doesn't narrow the field very much. <laughs> oh. uh, have you ever appeared on the New York stage, too? Yes. Mr. Uh. Mitchner? Hmm. I'll pass. Miss Francis? Oh, was the play, one of the plays you appeared in on the New York stage, Kind Sir? Yes. <laughs> well, what's answer we say together? Charles Boyer. Charles Boyer. Boyer. Charles Boyer is right. <laughs> and I might 
just say that uh, I, for one, and I know Bennett feels the same way as I'm sure the whole panel does, uh, is aware that uh, Charles is here because he is going to star with Catherine Cornell in There Shall Be No Night on another network next Sunday night. night. Can't mention the network because it's NBC and this is CBS, you see. Uh, but I, we're all, I know Bennett knew Bob Sherwood very well. I used to see him at Bennett's house, and I know we're all very fond of him, and it's wonderful to have one of his things done and it's, have it in such competent hands, Charles. Thank you very much, John. Good to have you with us. I want to ask a question about this, Charles. It's not going to be Finland and Russia, is it, on the television no, Hungary. show? It's now Hungary turned into start. Hungary. Mm -hmm. Like the bridge at Andau. I think we ought to explain <laughs> right. that this is There Shall Be No Night, isn't it? The Sherwood yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But okay. it is very, very exciting to appear opposite Miss Cornell. Oh, yes. We They're are wonderful. very, very excited for you to appear opposite us, Monsieur Well, Royer. merci, merci. Oh, merci. Merci. Oh, no. <laughs> <Wonderful. laughs> <Wonderful. laughs> well, I'm afraid the panel is very good tonight, but perhaps we'll trip them up now. Will our next contestant come in and sign in, please. <laughs> Vicky Legoescu, is that right? Uh, Miss or Mrs? Mrs. Mrs. Legoescu, that'll be all, thank you. And where are you from? I'm from Hampton, New Jersey. Hampton, New Jersey. Mrs. Negrescu, the panel. And will you join me over here? Are you familiar with our scorekeeping system? I think I am. Yeah, you know, good no answer gets you one card, ten cards, you're in. And now let's let the folks at home and our friends in the audience know exactly what your line is. I will tell you very quickly that Mrs. Negoescu is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Mr. Michener. Uh, Ms. Negoescu, uh, do you uh, provide services? Yes. Yes, you do. Uh, does uh, the general public pay for those services? Yes. Uh, in the form of admissions? <laughs> no. <laughs> I never knew you had a one-track mind before. That makes you run down at nine to go, Miss Francis. I mean, if there's a girl that pretty, I want to know if I can see her. <laughs> makes sense. Arlene? Is there by any chance a product connected with what you do, Mrs. Negoesco? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Negoesco, are the services that you render done to one person at a time? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then there is a group or class involved? Yes. Is this a profit-making organization that you work for? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Mitchell. Are the members of this class over the age of 18? No, not... Mm -mm. Not entirely, right? That's right, not entirely. Small conference. I'm terribly sorry about it. This was inevitable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's finding out if he can get into the class. <laughs> All right. Yes, we like conferences. I'll have to give a no on that because it is not a group entirely over the age of 18. Miss Francis? Uh -huh. But you teach something, do you? No. 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 Six down and four to go, Mr. Surf. Now, well, we want to get back to the fact that you work for a non-profit making organization. Now, would this be... Uh, uh, have anything to do with either government or, or charity or medicine? Yes. Now, which one? James <laughs> <laughs> Haggerty. Uh, can I rule out government? No. That makes it seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. You have something to do with a group that's governmental. Is it local government in New Jersey? Yes. City rather than state, or county rather than state? State. That makes you a no answer, and you gave something <laughs> away there. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Mitchner. Do the, uh, do the people who are in your class come willingly, in your group come willingly? <laughs> Jim, I'm sorry. I think you've asked the key question, but we've run out of time, so I'll have to flip all the cards. And this, hang on. Mrs. Negoescu is a prison guard at the Clinton Women's Reformatory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. It's wonderful to have you with us. Next.
next week, Mrs. John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night. Great fun having you on, Mr. Michener. Come again. Very fine to be with you tonight, Arlene. Thank you. It was nice to have you here. Good night, Bennett. Jim, why aren't you home writing? <laughs> <laughs> good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.